I am Vicky Cook and I am married to Mike and we have been in Rwanda for 14 years. Well, my name is Michael Cook and we have been with Rafiki Foundation for 22 years and we uh, have been blessed to be in three different countries in Africa in those 22 years but very blessed to be in Rwanda for the last 14. Rosemary Jensen, she is 95 now but she was the founder of Rafiki Foundation. She used to be with the Bible Study Fellowship and came to Kenya and a young, young homeless child in the market came up and said, help me, and grabbed her hand. And she went back to uh, her hotel room and she was sleeping on white sheets and feeling awful about it. So she decided to help um, orphans and that's the birth of Rafiki. What Rafiki Foundation's desire is, is to raise up godly young men and women to serve their country. We want them to be highly educated, uh, with great moral virtue, and be able to go out and be servants to others in the country and teach other people uh, what they need to know as well. Well, Rosemary had met the First Lady, uh, Jeanette Kagame, in Uganda at the first, uh, the President's Wives um, Conference. And she was taken, um, uh, Janet Museveni is a good friend of Rosemary, and took, um, took her to meet Mrs. Kagami. And that's how Rwanda was chosen to be one of the places for Rafiki. We were in 10 countries. When uh, the first ones came, I believe there were 10, and that was in January of 2009, right before the First Lady had uh, come to open the, the uh, village. And we got as high as 78 sometime later. And then uh, when the government found homes for so many of the young people, um, they moved out. And we ended up having just the ones who were secondary students remain as boarding students. We had 34, I think. And now we're, after this graduating class, we're down to 20. My name is Mukanweri Emanuela. But they call me Muki here, and I was born 25th of December 2005. I came here in Rafiki 2009, March 1st, and I've grown up here. So I was originally in a remote area in Ngesera. I think, I believe it was Ngeruka or Ngeenda, one of them. I don't remember well. And so I'm told that Rafiki staff used to come to our place looking for for kids and for some reason they came to our place and they kept coming back and back and back and eventually I came back with them. Right now I graduated actually recently so I'm waiting for college. I joined Rafiki Foundation when I was three and a half years old. I remember they got me from, I, I was living with my grandma there and she was the only one taking care of me, and that was in Musenyi, um, in Bujasera. And I was, I was, I could say I was adopted into this, this home, into Rafiki. Right now, I am, I have graduated from senior six, and I am heading towards college, university. First of all, I've been, a, uh, what I've learned from Rafiki, and it's a big factor, it's God. That's, that's the first and best thing I, I learned from Rafiki. And I've also learned to respect everyone, despite who they are, their background, their beliefs. And also, I have learned to put my values in a certain order based on what's most important, what's most beneficial for everyone. What I've most learned from here in Rafiki is one of the first things is that is God. I've learned much about God and I've learned what He has done for us, the gospel and what He has what He has for all of us. And Rafiki in Rafiki knowledge is granted. The curriculum the curriculum clearly says it and the teacher's expertise and their love and commitment says that. But what I most like about Rafiki is the pursuit of now of wisdom. So not only do we get knowledge, but we learn how it is, how we can pursue wisdom, and that comes from God. And there's, and that is the, 
the way to succeed in life is not just only knowledge, but also wisdom. In the future, I plan to, after I take probably a computer science degree or a mechanical engineering, engineering degree, I plan to probably start a tech company or a tech industry and participate in the cutting edge development of science and technology and hopefully educate the coming generations of Rwanda uh, as I also mentor them in both the academic aspect and also the spiritual aspect. When we originally started, it was Homes for Orphans. Uh, there were many, many AIDS orphans around Africa. And then we decided, wow, where are they going to go to school? And so schools then developed from that, from the need, and that's how we got into classical Christian education. We have been so blessed to be surrounded by like-minded people, people who have such a great joy in, in serving God and in serving the young people of the nation. We've had a very excellent relationship with the government and with the, the district and the different people in the district uh, who have been very supportive and helpful. We, we work with uh, our partner churches, the um, Anglican and the Presbyterians, their widows. We, we buy widows products and sell them in America so that they have school fees and uh, income. And we, we also um, do, uh, it's called RICE, it's Rafiki Inter International, well, sorry, Institute of Classical Education. So we take postgraduate um, students and we train them how to be teachers. Rafiki Foundation operates in 10 countries. There's seven in East Africa and three in West Africa. And they have a village similar to this. Uh, some of them were larger than this because this was the 10th one. And, uh, but they all have the same mission, the same desire to serve the country by serving the young people of the country. Um, I would tell Rwanda that the people are wonderful. Uh, they've been um, passionate about education and children. All of our, 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 all of our teachers are Rwandan and um, they're eager to serve. They serve with their whole heart and they love the kids. I think that's what I would take home from Rwanda is that they, uh, Rwandans, you, you love your children and you, you are passionate to serve and it's a great combination. And what we are actually going to do, we're still going to be part of Rafiki Foundation and uh, we'll still be doing some work remotely that, go, that needs to be done here and we'll be available to go to other countries as needed if people have to uh, take some time off for medical or whatever and uh, also we want to do recruiting to help other people know what kind of work is going on and uh, what part perhaps they could play in it. <music>